Salve a tutti amici di Comics Reporter e Fumetto Mania. Oggi il nostro ospite è veramente stellare internazionale. Abbiamo il grandissimo Dave McKean. Welcome, thank you. That's very nice to be here. Wherever, wherever here is, I know it's everywhere. Here is everywhere. Perfetto. Allora, cominciamo con la prima domanda. La prima domanda, è, prendiamo delle domande che ci pone il pubblico, ce la pone David Welsh e ci chiede se potessi passare una giornata con un artista, un maestro dell'arte del quale tu hai amato i lavori, chi sceglieresti? Di, di cosa parleresti con lui? Um, if only I've been briefed. Uh, that's really difficult because there are so many uh, the people that I've loved over the years. Um, i mean, the, the master, the master, obviously, is Picasso simply because he continually redefined himself, continued to change, and his dictum for life was that once you master something, you reject it and move on. And I think that's a wonderful way to live. It keeps you moving forward. It keeps you learning. It keeps you fresh. I'd have so much to talk about with him. La seconda domanda è quella che ci pone Dana Murray e ci chiede Dave, qual è la tua copertina preferita di Sandman che hai realizzato? Um, they tended to uh, be favorites for different reasons and at different times. Um, so the, the first few were painted and constructed, they were physical objects, And, and very big, you know, huge. Um, and my favorite one turned out to be number three, which actually is a portrait of John Constantine. It's not Sandman at all. But that's the only one that I kept. I kept that physical artwork, so I still have that one. Um, and then later on, as I say, I like them for different reasons. Uh, the first of the Brief Lives covers I liked because everybody else was doing big close-up faces and action characters and there were lots of fire and explosions and they're very energetic. And that cover was just a few little things and a few little bits of typography. And I liked the contrast. On the stand, I, it, I felt it stood out because it was so understated. And then I'll pick one more. I'll pick one more, which was, um, uh, I can't remember the number, I can't remember the number, it was 63, I think, something like that. But it was a picture of a figure with snakes in the head, coming out of the hair, uh, against a green background. And it was a digital comp. I just really got into Photoshop. And I made all of the elements, the figure, the background, the snake, the bit of painting, all the separate elements, scanned them, and composited them all in about a minute. It was that fast. And it made me laugh because it was so fast. And I really liked it. And it surprised me in the way that other people's work surprises me. When you draw and paint, you rarely, really surprise yourself. You might enjoy it or you might, there are other emotions, but it doesn't really surprise you. But that really did surprise me. And I like it for that reason. Perfetto, eccellente risposta. C'è l'imbarazzo della scelta realmente, fra le tue bellissime copertine. Allora Dave, tu sei stato l'autore di Black Orchid, ti ricordiamo per Black Orchid, Violent Cases, Signal to Noise, Arkham Asylum, le copertine di Hellblazer, Mr. Punch, Cages che hai scritto, per i tuoi lavori sui CD con Alice Cooper e tanto 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 altro, anche per la televisione abbiamo visto il lungometraggio Mirror Mask. Tra tutte queste opere ci chiede Jorge Tovalin, c'è una opera che, alla quale tu tieni di più, che ti ha reso realmente fiero di aver fatto? They're all difficult questions. Um, they, the, the things that I like, uh, that I, um, I'm proud of to a degree, um, Uh, they tend to be more recent things. Um, I, I, I finally did a comic book uh, that actually I'm really, really proud of 
front to back. I really, uh, uh, I was very happy doing it. It's called Black Dog, The Dreams of Paul Nash. Um, and um, that's probably the comic that I'm most proud of. Although Cages is still my baby. It was my first book that I wrote. Um, so I, it still really means a lot to me. Um, the film that I like is the, the, the last one really that came out, which was called Luna. It did not get a big release. Um, we won at a couple of festivals and um, it got a small release from the BBC in America. Um, but it, it's not perfect as a film, but it says what I wanted it to say. Um, and what it says meant a lot to me. Um, uh, so that's the film that I really like. And then there have been a bunch of other things, other books with David Almond, a book called The Savage. Um, I've just finished illustrating uh, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. I'm really happy with that. So, and ultimately, the thing that I'm most happy with is the next thing. The thing that's, that I'm really excited by is the next thing. So the thing that I'm working on right now uh, that I hope uh, will be, uh, I hope it will be good. Un'altra domanda, Dave, per favore. Allora, tu hai realizzato il lungometraggio eh, Mirror Mask in collaborazione con Neil Gaiman e con eh, gli studi Hanson. Puoi raccontarci questa esperienza, per favore? Well, um, it was uh, a huge learning experience. Um, it was the first time I really properly worked with actors, really good actors. Um, and that was amazing. I, I found out that I love working with actors. Um, and uh, I love uh, uh, playing on, on set and finding solutions and, you know, not necessarily getting what I expected. So you have to improvise and, uh, and uh, improvise on the spot and uh, collaborate properly and hopefully come up with something that's uh, better than the thing that you originally thought. So I loved all that. Um, we put together a little team of uh, very, very young uh, computer graphics animators, and they were amazing. Uh, nearly all of them were just great, and they really rose to the challenge. And because I gave them whole sequences to do, not just little jobs, little bitty mechanical jobs, they got whole sequences to do, and every part of that sequence Um, I think they all learned a lot as well. So that was a really lovely experience. Uh, I love doing the music with Ian Bellamy and Ashley Slater, who I've done lots of projects with now. Um, so there were lots of pluses. The minus for me was um, we had a little window of opportunity to write something and get it in to Sony Pictures to get the money to make the film. And so we wrote something quickly. When you write something quickly, you know, it's, it, it's almost certainly not going to be great. It might have some great ideas in it, and it might have a great central idea, it, idea in it, but it needs developing. And um, bizarrely, instead of saying, we like, the, we like bits of it, but go away for another, uh, you know, four months and flesh it out and rewrite it, they just handed us a check and said, go and make it. And because we were so astonished, and I guess thinking, oh, well, maybe it's better than we think, um, we, we went off to make it, and then realized in the making of it, actually, it would have been great to spend more time really getting the script right, getting the story better uh, and less pre-digested, less of a regular fantasy story. Um, so those are the things that, that I'm sad about in the end. Uh, the other thing was actually the making of it, the slog of doing all the computer graphics was just uh, miserable. And um, we were at the bleeding edge of technology and everything went wrong all the time. So actually, I don't have great memories of a lot of the production, post-production process. But there were certainly wonderful moments in there. Um, Now the film is finished. Well, it's been finished for a long time. It's been finished for 15 years. Um, I've, I've never seen it. Um, I watched it so many times when we were making it. And then I watched it for the first couple of public screenings at uh, Sundance Festival and uh, one or two others. That was enough. And I've never seen it since. Um, I've seen a few little clips. 
but I find it very hard to watch because it brings back those memories of some rather frustrating memories. Um, so I haven't seen it since. Maybe I'll watch it again in five years and see what I think. Dave, tu hai sempre usato molto il collage, eh, la pittura, la fotografia appunto per le tue illustrazioni. Lo abbiamo, abbiamo apprezzato moltissimo il tuo libro Option, Option Click che è stato pubblicato anche in Italia. Quanto e come è cambiato il tuo modo di lavorare con, le, con l'avvento dell'era digitale? Raccontaci. Um, in, in a way, uh, it changed um, nothing at all because um, essentially the, the problem stays the same. Um, you, there's an idea or a story or an emotion or some central um, thing that you're trying to communicate. And you're just trying to find the best tools, the best language, the best tone of voice to do that. Um, whether that's a drawing or a painting or a bit of film or a song or um, so, you know, a photograph or whatever, that's, uh, that's a technical exercise to a degree, but, but it's really just about trying to answer the brief and answer the, the problem. So in a way it's the same, the, the computer, Photoshop is just another tool, it's a very powerful tool, but it's just another tool. But in some respects, obviously it changed it a lot uh, because it's such a powerful tool, because it allows you such control over the image making process. It allows you to try things quickly and easily and save them and ditch them and, and you can be much more playful and, uh, and it, it work very quickly and Um, try many things. To a degree, it, it's um, a bit of a, a danger because you can try so many things, you can get lost uh, thinking that there's no end to the amount of possibilities. But if you have a focus on what you're trying to express, the tool of, of Photoshop and computer graphics is so powerful, you really can get there. Before I started using Photoshop, I think the image in my head compared to the image I was getting on paper, maybe I'd get about 40%, 30, 40% of it. But after using Photoshop and photography and collage in the computer, I was getting 70, 80, 90% of what I imagined uh, on on the screen and therefore in print. So in that respect, yes, it it had a huge impact. David, potresti parlarci per favore Stiamo terminando, eh? Potresti parlare per favore dei tuoi progetti presenti, attuali e futuri, se non sono confidenziali? No, they're not particularly confidential, um, although they haven't really been officially announced yet. Um, I am working on another graphic novel. In fact, I've nearly finished it. Um, it's uh, a, a story that I've written. Uh, it is about... How can I put this? Um, it's about two stories. There are two stories in it running parallel, sort of two worlds that touch and meet. And in those two worlds, one of them is very much here and now. Oh, well, very much our world. But in the late, um, where are we? Late 19th century. So the 18, late 1800s. Um, a story inspired by a Welsh horror writer called Arthur Macken at a point in his life when his wife has died and he's grieving her death and desperately wanting there to be another realm, desperately wanting there to be something beyond our, our ordinary life, some supernatural realm where he maybe could meet her again. So it's a very natural grieving feeling. And then the other story is this other realm and some, uh, it's more of an adventure story really about a hunter of monsters, but the monsters turn out to be political monsters. I wanted to write something about where we currently are in the world with our politics, but I wanted to do it under the cloak of a, a symbolic story, a fantastical story. So it's about the corrupting nature of the politics that we have at the moment and grief. <laughs> so those two things. So I'm doing that, and then I'm editing a film called The Wolf's Child, which was a play that I wrote for the Wildworks Theatre Company, and I shot it many times as we were performing it, and I've 
wrapped a film story around it. And so I'm slowly putting that film together as well. Many other things as well, actually. Lots of other illustrated books and um, some musical things. But uh, I think those are the two main ones at the moment. And I'm thinking about doing a big sort of art of retrospective book with everything in. And I hope it's going to be huge and very thick and uh, have a bit of everything in it. Benissimo, avremo in attesa di poterli vedere. L'ultimissima domanda, Dave, l'ultimissima domanda. Per favore, raccontaci il tuo rapporto con l'Italia. Um, I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking to you now, but Italy is my favorite place. Um, the, the one big problem is that I can't speak Italian. So um, that's the only issue. I love visiting Italy. Um, some of my favorite places like Venice and uh, Treviso and these various places, um, Perugia, um, are some of my favorite places in the world. Um, I love the way of life, I love the food, um, and I love the, the, uh, the, the easiness of life. I, 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 I laugh a lot when I'm there and I feel very relaxed there. And I've done a lot of projects based on uh, the, the, the photographs that I've taken there and the feeling of being there. So that's all wonderful. Um, it was great to go to Luca. I've been, I can't remember how many times now, maybe four times. But I went a long time ago. Uh, I went a long time ago when it was in the city. And that was fantastic. That was, that was the best. And then it moved out of the city. And I loved the, the city still, but I didn't like the convention being out of the city. Um, now, it's, now it's not just in the city, it is the city. It completely takes over the city. And, you know, I've been a couple of times and I really loved walking around at seven o'clock in the morning before everybody arrives and have my, uh, cappuccino, my cup of tea, my espresso uh, and a croissant and watch uh, people uh, walk through the, the town center. I love that. And I like the fact that a lot of my friends were there and I could catch up with them and it's very busy or whatever. But there's just too many people. It's just too, too many people. It's too crazy. Too many silly costumes. Um, and it's too American, I think. I think it's become swamped with um, a, a, a sort of a American product. And you can, you can obviously still find a lot of European creators and, create, uh, and work there. Um, but it's just become too much of a homogenous world culture thing. Whereas I think I preferred it when it was more uniquely uh, Italian uh, or European. But that's just me. It's still wonderful to go. Uh, and I still love meeting up with Lorenzo Matotti and Jose Munoz and uh, all those guys and all my friends who are there. Grazie per il tuo tempo da parte di Comics Reporter e Fumettomania. Amici, è tutto e alla prossima. Ciao, grazie. Ciao, thank you very much. Bye-bye.